afternoon all. I'd like to continue my series on Capablanca and how things backfire. I think this goes under the general principles of seeing a lot of ideas in chess as double-edged swords. And often, as you're improving in chess, uh, you can actually use very lucrative motives on your opponent's part to try and lay kind of traps in a way, because because things are, are kind of, this double-edgedness does exist. And here, you might think, when you're playing with the black pieces against a player as strong as Capablanca, that it might be a good idea to try and simplify. Let's look at this game against Wheatcroft, which was played in 1939. George Shorrock Ashcom Wheatcroft uh, was born in 1905. He was a British correspondence champion in 1935, that's four years before this game, and a strong blindfold player. So playing black against the mighty Capablanca, he actually played the Sicilian defence. And we see this curious knight e2 move, a bit unusual, but it repairs uh, potentially a fianchetto, uh, with the bishop looking right down the diagonal without being obstructed. And in fact, this is the way it goes now, g3 by Capablanca, knight c6, bishop g2, g6. And now we see a construction of the centre, which is a bit like a Roy Lopez plan with c3. So bishop g7, d4. And let's put on actually a gabetza here. So Wheatcroft with the black pieces uh, could consider uh, either you know taking on d4 or queen c7, but it looks as though he puts an open invitation to white here to potentially exchange off queens. He plays e5. Uh, this does allow the possibility of taking here and, and taking off the queens, which in this position doesn't really offer white that much. Another alternative is d5, of course. Campoblanca did actually play d takes c5, though initially. After d takes c5, he doesn't take uh, the queen off here. He actually keeps the tension there. Uh, possibly taking the queen is not such a bad idea, though. Uh, there will still be a little bit of pressure, but actually Capablanca keeps the tension with the queens glaring at each other in this position by castling. And black, for the moment, keeps the tension with bishop e6. And the bishop looks to be quite useful, potentially on this diagonal, if you consider this bishop is irrelevant to this diagonal for the moment. So that c4 square seems particularly um, dangerous for white. Now, both sides really don't want to kind of potentially release the tension by taking the queen off here, because if queen takes here, we're actually developing uh, black's pieces. You know, rook takes d8, and black actually stands quite well here. Capablanca instead plays bishop e3. And now, arguably, uh, this tension of the queen staring at each other, uh, you know, should be should be kept in some way. Uh, or the queen, the black queen, could consider moving to, for example, e7. And this would still facilitate a potential tempo game with, say, rook d8 uh, later on the cards. So, OK, um, in this position, though, black was tempted uh, to take the queen on d1, which is helping white develop a little bit. Uh, we see now rook takes d1. And you might not think uh, this is such a big deal. In fact, it, it is technically virtually an equal position. Uh, Black's got an issue at the moment with that uh, c5 pawn. He protects it with b6. And now we see knight a3, which secures that c4 square for a moment against the bishop, but it also potentially threatens knight b5 to c6, which could be quite dangerous for Black. Now here, uh, there are various moves which could be uh, considered, including, I suspect, a6 is not too bad, uh, but white might be able to switch attention to the king side with a move like f4. If it ever he can get this bishop liberated on this diagonal, it'd be quite dangerous. As uh, so this f5 could actually be a, a serious concern for black. If we have bishop h6, it looks a bit awkward to stop f5, and white is slightly better here. But nevertheless, a move like a6 could be considered or other moves like king e7. But instead, black had this tendency now uh, to try and perhaps simplify by rook, by means of rook d8. Does white have any advantage whatsoever in this position? 
Well, we see now uh, a very interesting move from Capablanca. I think a very, very strong move in the circumstance. He plays actually knight b5. So this heads potentially towards that c7 square. It's inviting bishop c4. And that is played actually. Bishop c4 is played. So double attacking both knights. Now this check, the king moves. And now instead of doing something with this knight or trying to protect it, we see the move knight d5 check. And this secures white at a small advantage now. So from a position which was like virtually nothing, white has secured something uh, advantageous here. In that, for example, if bishop takes d5, this isn't particularly nice uh, for black. Say e takes knight a5. We have b4 here. This is this is quite strong. It can lead to some difficulties for black. This kind of variation, where white's pressure is evident, really, especially like crashing down to the seventh rank. This is uh, quite a dangerous position. This this type of thing, taking on a7 next, and things like bishop c6. So it's quite dangerous. This kind of scenario. Uh, so this knight d5, it's tolerated there. And perhaps one of the better ways would have been king f8, uh, technically, but the king actually ventured to e6 in this position. And now Capablanca protected his e2 knight, a dual purpose move, because actually it, he also uh, can potentially double the rooks now behind this d5 knight. Black now played knight g e7. And here, uh, white could just play rook a d1 and secure a reasonable advantage just with that move. If rook a d1, uh, this is quite dangerous uh, for black. If bishop takes a2, for example, I think that could lead to a big problem with knight c1 here. You see that uh, everything's guarding d5 so this is actually winning a piece because when does the bishop go now it's uh, potentially uh, winning a piece after bishop c4 b3 and now the bishop if it goes to b5 or a6 there's knight c7 check so this is actually winning material this position but uh no actually uh so although that is a good move uh, to play rook a d1. Another good move is played instead, which may be even stronger. Knight c7 check is played. Now the king goes to f6. And here, Campaplank plays rook a d1. So it's the only file which is shared by both sides. But white has a deadly threat potentially coming up with rook d6 check. Let's have a look. Or there's some other threats as well. Now to demonstrate this, let's let's take this pawn here. Black didn't take the pawn there. Now rook d6 check is quite awkward. Although there's bishop e6 in this position, the king is quite precariously placed. And in fact, h4 here threatens now bishop g5 mate. And if h6, we can play f4. And there are very serious threats of taking here on bishop f4 check. So again, this kind of scenario is fairly unpleasant uh, for black. If he dared uh, take the pawn on a2. Instead, black took the rook on d2. Now this does leave, again, this idea of rook d6 check being dangerous. So let's try taking the pawn here just to illustrate this. Rook d6 check, bishop e6. In this position, in fact, uh, knight d5 is quite strong now. And what happens here? Black has to lose material, it seems, after taking e takes. Black is losing that bishop on e6. So, okay, uh, this is a very serious threat to play rook d6. The king is very awkwardly placed. Black tries rook d8. And can you guess what Capablanca played here? And it's actually the final move of the game. If I give you, sorry, it's not the final move of the game. It's near to the final move of the game. It's um, So it's the prelude to it. So white to play, what would you play in this position if I gave you 10 seconds starting from now?
Okay. Rook takes d8 is played. There's a problem here after knight takes d8. Can you see it? Now we're at the final move of the game at move 20. What does white play to finish off? Okay, unfortunately for black, there's knight e8 check. And black resigned here. Even though he's attacking a knight here, unfortunately here, there's only one move, king e6. And now this is with check to win this piece. <laughs> and the problem is, even if white is left with two pieces attacked here, white can just use that check again to safeguard the knight. And now consider just moving this knight to c1. But uh, maybe even flinging a check first before moving to c1. So white remains just a piece up. So it's an interesting game here because it's though black didn't mind um, inviting exchanges, but uh, it seemed to backfire in, in terms of black's king safety, really, in the final position. Black was struggling here in any case. If he had tried to parry rook d6 with, say, knight c8, white is slightly better. White can protect his a2 pawn now and does have an advantage uh, in this position in any case. Uh, there's the bishop pair and knight d5 is quite a, it's a painful square for black positionally but uh, it's not all over you know this, the game can continue uh, but in the game continuation, it, game continuation it was all over after that rather pretty knight e8 check so kind of seesaw motion with the knight would secure being a piece up okay hope you enjoyed that comments or questions on youtube thanks very much